Let's go, let's go, man. Let's get into it. So, you know, I've been talking a lot about a lot of the Bears a lot this offseason. Maybe it's because they're about to get the best quarterback in the draft. Maybe because the Bears, you know, they might actually be good. And, you know, they have a very good chance of being good this upcoming season. And I, I don't Maybe I, I got to see what they do. Once they get Caleb, you know, I'm definitely going to be covering that storyline a lot. But speaking of that, let's talk about the Bears. So, the Bears have traded Justin Fields, and they have the number one overall pick in the draft, obviously. Anybody who can't see that is blind. But the Bears are going to be drafting Caleb Williams with the number, uh, with the first overall pick in the NFL draft. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I mean, they draft, they interviewed Caleb. They worked out Caleb. Caleb was hanging out with, uh, who they get? Keenan Allen, I think. They got a Keenan Allen. They got uh, one of those charges, Mike Williams. I think it was a Keenan Allen that they got. And, you know, sorry, I'm going to have to sleep right now. And, you know, so they're most likely drafting Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick. I don't doubt Caleb Williams' talent. Caleb Williams with this roster could make the playoffs. I mean, once again, it's a rookie. I, I expect them to win six, six to eight games, and this is a year where Caleb Williams could, you know, uh, ball out. You know what I'm saying? This is a year he could ball out. I will say this. I don't expect the Bears to make the playoffs, despite the roster or not. Caleb Williams is once again a rookie. We can't expect every rookie to be like C.J. Stroud and take him to the second round. Caleb's obviously going to have learning pains. He doesn't know the NFL defenses. He doesn't know the NFL offenses, so it's going to take Caleb Williams time. But 6-8 wins, that's where I have the Bears, depending on their schedule. But we'll find out. It is what it is there. But there's a lying other issue here. Matt Eberflus is a bum. He is beyond horrible. He sucks so bad, it's not even funny. It's really not even funny. Like, Matt Eberflus is bad. He's so bad. Why didn't the Bears fire him? You get rid of all the coordinators. You get rid of your defensive coordinator, your offensive coordinator, your offensive line coach. You get rid of everything. But you keep this bum. For what? He's not good. He's had, what, two years, three years? What has he shown you to keep him? Isn't his whole thing of he's a defensive coach or whatever? This The Bears' defense has been mid at best. Mid at best. I mean, I know they started picking up with, like, Montez Sweat, them, but Montez Sweat's a pro bowler. Montez Sweat's a baller. Obviously, your defense is going to look better. Jalen Johnson's pretty nasty, too. Jalen Johnson's pretty good, too. But at the same time, it's like, what is the point of keeping Matt Eberflus? He's not good. He's horrible. He's not a leader of men. He's not. He's just not a good coach. You should have got rid of him. But if you're going to clean house, clean house fully. If you're going to get rid of the quarterback, get rid of all of the coordinators and stuff, get rid of the head coach too. Just start brand new. Besides all the good pieces you have now, all the pieces you traded for like Montez Sweat and all the pieces that you re-signed, like DJ Moore, or you sign like Kellen Moore, or re-sign like Jalen Johnson, just get rid of them. They're beyond garbage. Every Bears fan knows Matt Eflus isn't the guy. And I know you guys got Shane Walden as your offense coordinator. Shane Walden's a great offense coordinator. Obviously, you saw what he did with uh, Ryan Tannehill. You saw what he did with uh, Geno Smith. And I told you guys, Geno Smith's a bum, 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 bum. You know what I'm saying? But you saw what he did. But I'm going to keep it real. If Caleb Williams happens to ball this year, Shane Walden's going to get a head coaching job. Whether he's a good head coach or not, we don't know. I don't know if, he, if he's had a head coaching job or not. Someone in the comment section can let me know. But to my extension, he doesn't have a uh, head coach. He never had a head coaching job. Someone can correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But he's going to get another head coaching job. He made Geno Smith and Drew Locke. He made Drew Locke and Geno Smith look respectable. And if he makes Caleb Williams look great, someone's going to offer him a head coaching job and offer him a lot of money, which he's going to take because every coordinator, whether it's good for them or bad for them, whether they fail or succeed, 
always wants to be a head coach. You know what I'm saying? So if Caleb balls out, if the Bears offense looks great, if they win eight, nine games, even if they miss the playoffs, someone's going to give Shane Walding a head coaching job, which leads to the point of this video. I honestly believe Lincoln Riley will be the head coach for the Chicago Bears next year, next season. Not this upcoming season, obviously, next year. Lincoln Riley's contract with USC is coming up. They're moving into the Big 12 or the Big 10. I don't know where the Pac-12 is going, but they're going to have more competition. And anybody who knows from Oklahoma, I'm an Oklahoma Sooner fan. Lincoln Riley does not, and I repeat, does not like competition. That's why he went to the Pac-12. He thought the Pac-12 was easy pickings, but he went to the Pac-12 in the wrong time when Washington got Michael Penix and Oregon got uh, Bo Mix. And we saw what happened. We saw what happened. There's a reason why he left the Big Ten, Big 12, because the Big 12 is this year combining with the Big 10, and the Big 10 is all SEC talent. Lincoln Riley can't compete with that because, you know, he's a coward who runs away from competition. He runs away from hardship. A lot why he ran into the Pac-12. Now that the Pac-12 is combining with, I believe, the Big 12, either the Big 12 or Big 10, I could be wrong. I think it's the Big 12. It's the Big 12 because – I remember the Big 12 was scared that it was sad that Texas and Oklahoma were going to the SEC. So the Pac-12 is going into the Big 12, which means more competition, which means Lincoln Riley's going to have to compete more. And also, Lincoln Riley doesn't have a quarterback. I don't care what anybody says. That Miller kid that was lighting up that Louisville defense, which had like 20 starters sitting down and had no film on that rookie quarterback that was starting, He's not good. He's not going to do what Caleb, Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray did for Lincoln Riley. He can't even do what Spencer Rattler did. And Spencer Rattler is beyond horrible. I believe the Bears will call up Lincoln Riley, who has a history with Caleb Williams, who is a, quote, offensive guru, and be the Bears' head coach. Which is not a bad thing. I mean, you get a guy who's good on offense. I don't know who the Bears' defensive coordinator is. But if you get a good defensive coordinator who can uh, coach Montez Sweat and Jalen Johnson, and if you guys get Jared Verse, shout out to Jared Verse, Florida State. I mean, what's the issue? I mean, we never know. I mean, I know college coaches' tendency to flop, but Lincoln Riley doesn't have, like, you know, the – like, you know, off the field issues as, you know, a uh, Urban Meyer where, you know, Urban Meyer's kicking, kicking a player saying, what are you going to do about it? And, you know, going out to bars and taking pictures and stuff like that while his wife is at home chilling with the kids. So, you know, it is it is what it is. I, and as the Bears, I mean, that's not a bad it's not a bad move. Lincoln Riley to the Bears, that's not a bad move. I mean, he can't be any worse than Eberflus. Eberflus is beyond horrible. Once again, I don't understand the Bears' logic. If you're going to clean house, if you're going to start brand new somewhat, new regime, new coordinators, new quarterback, why? Excuse me. Why? Why? Keep Matt Eberflus. For what? For what? He's not good. He's not Good. He's absolutely beyond horrible. Like, I'm sorry. He's just terrible. He sucks. He's so bad. It's not even funny. Six bro. Like, I I don't understand it. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, six thirty two just for that. Uh, you know, I I mean, hey, maybe they know something I don't know. Maybe he's, you know. I don't know. Maybe he's Mike Tomlin. I don't know. I mean, we know that's not true, but, you know, maybe they know something. I don't know. But Lincoln Riley to the Bears, I can see in 2025. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, he has the history of Caleb. He's a, quote, offensive guru. And with his contract coming up and also the patch of giving more competition, and this idiot always being scared of competition. That's why he left my Oklahoma Sooners. Lincoln Riley to uh, the Bears. But that's my thoughts. What are yours? Do you guys think Lincoln Riley could be a, a good candidate for the Bears when Matt? Because we all know Matt Eberflus is going to get fired. No ifs and buts. He's going to get fired. He's just is beyond horrible. It's just it's up and coming. But do you know? Do you think Lincoln Riley will be hired? And do you think that is a good fit, Lincoln Riley to the Bears when they draft Caleb Williams, RJ out. <laughs>